In this video, I wanna show you the power of storytelling through capturing the details. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and slrlounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up friends? My name is Pai, welcome to Adorama TV. Now you might recognize this spot from a previous tutorial and I'm actually filming this right after that tutorial, specifically because this scene reminds me of the power of storytelling. When I look at this scene, I feel like a lot of us might think that there's maybe only one or two shots to be had. And what I see is so many different pieces that can really help us to craft the story by getting in and shooting the details. I wanna show you how that process works applied to landscape photography. Now, after we shoot the shots, I'm gonna take it into post with you. We're gonna edit the images so I can show you what this entire piece would look like. It would look incredible, printed and hung on your wall as a piece of artwork in your home. And you can apply this concept to anything. In fact, you probably have seen it applied to weddings already. Wedding photographers will get in, shoot the details on the dress, rings, combine it all together in an album. This is the same concept, but I want you to see it in a different light. So let's start with that first wide shot. We use a framework that I've created for our shooters I just refer to it as wide, medium, tight. In every scene, I want you to shoot wide. This is gonna be your establishing shot. Go medium to tell the story, then go tight to showcase the details. So we're gonna do that exact same thing. I'm here with my Canon R5 with a 2870. I'm gonna go ahead and just get an exposure. And we're gonna basically start with that same kind of wide shot that we did in the last tutorial, showcasing mostly rock. I'm gonna go at F5.6. One one thousandth of a second, ISO 100. I want to have detail in this scene. I want to have a wide depth of field. And I'm going to get my composition right as these waves come in. What a beautifully timed wave. On an overcast day, it's that much more important that y'all are shooting raw files so that we can get that detail back in our sky and our clouds. Beautiful. We have that first shot. That's our wide image, right? So before you walk off from this scene, I want you to capture your medium and tight shots. One of the things that I'm seeing is if I kind of zoom into that horizon, I can sort of see the mist coming off of these rolling waves. So I'm actually gonna get that shot. I'm gonna get the shot of kind of this far horizon line with the wave coming through and a little bit of that water being kicked up. Beautiful. Side note, on overcast days like this, I do like to make sure my highlight alert is on so that way if anything is kind of blown out, I, I can see it blinking right there in front of me, but we're good on this. Okay, so now I'm gonna go and look for other things in the scene, right? So this is where I don't want you guys to move on. Look at this beautiful detail in the rock right here. Look at the way that the water is kind of crashing against the sand. Look at the way that it's kind of crashing against the rock and then check out the surfers directly in front of us. So we already have this storyboard. We just have to recognize what's in front of us. What I'm gonna do is start with the close-up details of the rocks. Okay, so right here, I get this beautiful shot where I can kind of drop down to about F4, low ISO, one one thousandth of a second, as the rocks are, rocks are kind of uh, being splashed by the water coming up. We just get this gorgeous shot of kind of this narrowing point as it drops right into this little triangle on those rocks. I feel like that shape looks so cool. The detail of the rocks looks cool too. You can also get in tight, not get your camera wet. Okay, let's get in tight. Let's get detail of the rocks themselves. Okay, I can open this out to F2, get more of that uh, depth. I'm just gonna find a nice little spot here where we can just kind of see this beautiful highlight in the rock. Now the water is kind of washing up on the rocks. It looks fantastic. I would uh, suggest, you know, not getting too close, simple simple rule of thumb. Now, I have a 45 megapixel camera. I don't have a telephoto lens with me, but what I do have is a lot of resolution. So I could probably capture a great shot of the surfers that I could get pretty close in on and show that piece of it. And then all I really need from that point is maybe just a shot of the water kind of hitting the sand and I'm good. Now what I'm gonna do for this surfing shot is kind of get as low as I can. So that way when I get the surfer going, he kind of he or she will be above the uh, horizon line. While we're all waiting for the waves, 
I'm gonna go ahead and catch a shot of all the surfers in this scene. Hopefully as the water's kind of coming up and around these rocks right here like it's doing. Again, we're kind of going towards a medium slash wide focal length to get this kind of an image. Okay, one is up. So for that shot, I'm of course gonna zoom in as much as I can so I have as much detail as possible to crop in on, knowing that I'm also shooting 45 megapixel files. Okay, so with my surfer captured, I'm gonna see if I can maybe get a little bit of that water kind of washing out on these rocks. And the last shot, I'm gonna get a shot of the water kind of hitting the sand and maybe out to this side a little bit. So let's do that. While I'm waiting for that water, I'm gonna shoot another shot right here. We get this beautiful kind of wrapping medium shot with these rocks. Now with the water coming in, we're gonna turn and get a shot of it going out. That's beautiful. Okay, let's go get our one against the sand. What we're really doing here is just getting a variety of these different shots so that we can piece this all together as we sit down and edit and create an entire storyboard. Perfect. We've got a great sequence now. I wanna take this all into post. We're gonna select out our images. I'm gonna show you how to edit them. Okay, so we're back in front of the computer. We're gonna get into post-production. Now I have here eight exercise files loaded up. If you guys want, you can pause the video, go ahead and download the exercise files, or you can simply use your own images. I'm inside of Lightroom in the library module. And what I briefly wanna show you is kind of the set of images that we just captured. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the filter. Let's look at, well, there we go, one selected. Now let's look at this grouping. You will quickly notice that none of these images are really particularly that interesting, okay? They're all quite average. And this is what I want you guys to remember is when you approach a scene and you feel like, none of the images in the scene are really that crazy. Or maybe you just don't have the right lens or the right setup to capture the scene in its entirety. I want you to fall back on this storytelling kind of concept where you're gonna create multiple images. Some are gonna be close up, some are gonna be semi-wide, but you're going to create a sequence that does a better job at telling the story and it creates a more visually interesting piece of art. So into post, what we need to do first is we're gonna go ahead and number one, edit all of the images cohesively. Number two, we're then gonna crop the images. And then number three, I'm just gonna demonstrate kind of how these might look in a wall art setup and you can kind of see it all come together. Let's go ahead and start with just editing. I'm gonna jump in the develop module by pressing D. At this point, y'all can use any look you like. If you want to develop your own kind of ground up image, feel free if you want to use your own presets that's totally fine too we just released visual flows black and white mixer so i'm kind of excited to use it uh, especially on this sex i think we'll get a really cool dramatic black and white look with these clouds so i'm going to do that i'm going to use a bold landscape and i might do let's see that one looks cool too i might do the cinematic variant I kind of like this HDR landscape with that cinematic variant. I think it looks, it, it creates a really nice dark vibe to the sky and to the rock. What I'm gonna do here is actually lift the white point because I'm gonna make the highlights sort of jump out while we leave the shadows kind of dark. So that's really it. That's all I'm gonna do to the image is just apply that. We're gonna go ahead and make sure that the horizon line is cropped straight. And then I'm gonna grab all the images by pressing shift press Control shift s or Command shift s if you're on a Mac. So once you've developed that one image to that particular look, you're gonna synchronize all the settings to the other images. What I like to do is turn off local adjustments, turn off crop and spot removal. These are all things that you should be applying on an image to image basis. So let's go ahead and sync that now. And then we're simply gonna scan through and make sure that the images actually look cohesive. So while I go through, I'm gonna correct crops. I'm gonna look at the black point and the white point and make sure that it's about the same on each of these, okay? Same thing here, 
white point looks pretty good i might bring the exposure up just a little and just compare looks good this looks good okay this one's a bit dark so i'm going to go ahead and pull this up this is the one that i have my surfers in so i'm going to pull this up a bit and what i might need to do is raise a bit of the black point okay and raise a bit of the shadow so make any small adjustments as you need we'll go ahead and correct the uh, the little horizon line oh this one's cool and i'm going to go ahead and correct the horizon the water looks good i'm going to do the same thing with the shadows on this one just lift the shadows a tiny bit okay that looks good all right same thing here the white point's a bit dark so is the black point so let's just raise exposure just a bit i say just a bit a lot okay we're going to correct the crop and this one i see a little bit too much of this vignette so i'm going to jump into the tools and just back off the vignette a little bit right there is fine and then i'm going to darken this so we get that nice dark kind of grays with the brighter whites okay so now what i'm going to do is just select all the images and i'm going to review them for that kind of cohesive look so i'm pressing n to go into this survey view and yes all the grays and what i'm looking at is basically does my white point sort of match across the board I don't know why Lightroom's bugging out and not showing that image. But I'm looking to see, do my whites match? Do my blacks kind of match across the board? And they do, at least they're, they're close enough for right now. Okay, so we wanna make sure that it looks cohesive. Now, let's go to that step two. I'm gonna crop these, namely just for this tutorial. So you guys can see like, if I were to print this to a square, and, and these would likely go like into a square wall art setup uh, in my home, okay? So I'm gonna actually crop these as squares just so you can see what that crop would look like inside of Lightroom. I'm gonna right here, I'm gonna pull down a little bit, do a little more water, okay? Let's go square, let's go about right here. Okay, pull it up a little bit. Same thing here, we're gonna go square. I'm gonna kind of, on this one, zoom into the surfers. Now, immediately you're gonna see the benefits of, I talked a little about high resolution, you know, having more resolution. It's, it's really kind of quite nice in situations like this uh, because I can actually have the ability to essentially zoom and crop without having ever kind of changed the lens out. Now, this isn't a kind of i don't want you guys to do this in every scenario because uh you know it's obviously not the best way to go about it your best quality is always going to come from switching out your lens but in many cases you don't have that option check this out there's a, kind of a rule of thumb that when you have a person in motion that you show them leading into the open side of the frame right so i put them like right here have them leading the open side for this particular image though, I'm gonna break the rule. And it's because I love this wash and this wave going behind him. I think it's more visually interesting to see kind of the wave crashing behind him than to see what was in front of him essentially. So I'm gonna knowingly break that rule. I'm also gonna fix this, uh, there's a boat right here. And I'm gonna turn down the grain just a bit in a second too. But there's a boat right here that I don't really need in this shot. It's not really adding much for me. Let's go ahead and do the same thing here. Okay, I'm going to pull this one up a bit. That looks nice. Let's correct the crop a bit. Or the horizon line. And here, same thing. Let's go ahead and pull it up. Let the edge of the water kind of drop out of the frame. And that's nice. Okay, for the most part, all this is good. I think I wanted to check one thing. Oh yeah, I wanted to fix the grain a bit. So I'm gonna select all these images and I have a little preset in here that just dials up and down grain. So I'm actually gonna go to something a little more subtle. We're gonna go to a, a medium kind of film grain um, and this looks quite a bit better. Yeah, I like that one, okay. So now we can go to step three, which is basically selecting out a set and kind of watching the magic happen, right? So what I'm gonna do is select this surfer, I'm gonna select this rock, and I'm gonna select this water. I'm gonna press N. And this is what you would get now for that wall art display, or for a blog, or for an album. We would use these images side by side to better tell the story rather than relying on any one single image, especially knowing that, you know, we didn't really shoot any crazy one single image in this shoot. So again, I can grab a different set. I can go to this set of rocks right here. And if I want it to be more landscape oriented, right? I might select these three. 
and it's going to be a shot kind of showing the detail of the rock, kind of a, a middle and like a close up. So we have this wide, medium, tight, or we can even swap it out. We can go wide, tight, and let's show water for the third one. So with this, and, and remember, the pieces of this is to shoot the details of the scene, and this applies to any type of genre. You see it most in weddings, and that's why I talked about that at the very beginning, is like, I wanted to show you this same concept, but applied to something else. But you're gonna shoot the scene, you're gonna shoot the details of the scene, what's going on, then you're gonna take it into post. You're gonna edit everything cohesively, then you're gonna go and verify that everything looks right in terms of colors. We need the colors to be cohesive for this to be a singular piece of kind of wall art or whatever you might be creating. From there, I like to actually crop to whatever I'm gonna be printing to and select out the final images that are gonna go into the set. And that's it. That is the power of using multiple images to craft your story instead of relying on just one. That's it for this video and the power of storytelling. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, you can help us out here at Adorama TV by giving the video a thumbs up. You can subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn on notifications if you want to be notified of each video that's going up every day. And uh, that's it for me. I'll see you guys back here same time, same place next week. Peace.